that's why we're here. Oh, that, yeah. that's just when it hits yeah. Yeah. and the wrist and martial arts, they punch with these two knuckles, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, no, boxing. What do they punch with boxing? <laughs> huh? Is it? Top two knuckles, too? Even though you've got gloves on. But you can use that as well. Yeah, okay. Well, when Chen uses the bottom two, which is the exact opposite, general argument is these two are weaker, right? Why would you use these two knuckles? Because these two are much bigger and stronger, right? The truth of the matter is, hitting end on, even if you've got a chopstick, end on, I go like that, if I go straight in, it will stab a hole in him, it won't break the chopstick, right? Chopsticks are much weaker than the knuckles, right? Knuckles can, you know, bones can take, you know, thousands of pounds of force, right? So what we're saying is, yeah, these ones are stronger. It might take like 5,000 pounds to break those. You might be able to break these with 3,000 pounds, but most you can punch is 200 pounds. So guess what? Both will do the job, right? So why do we use these? Well, they're smaller. So what do you reckon? If I... If I stab him with a chopstick here, compared to stabbing him with, with a knife with the same force, which would do more damage? No. Why? Sharper. Fire sharper. Fire. Well, guess what? These are sharper. So, therefore, if it's not going to break my knuckles, I hit with these, it's going to be sharper and it's going to end up uh, delivering the force in a concentrated area. Okay. So, that's one thing. Yeah? 90% of the martial artists have got different ideas because they use these knuckles, right? Okay, second thing that uh, we want to talk about, and this is what amazes me about Moi when she invented Wing Chun. They didn't have you know, Newton's laws of physics and all that sort of stuff, yet the techniques are so much based on that theory, right? Especially the theory of Newton's third law, which is? Okay, uh, each force has, uh, was, have, have they learned that? Okay, all right. So, yeah, so what happens is in Wing Chun, if I throw a punch at Scott, and that's why we have it on our t shirt here, I think you go bang right there. But when, when, uh, when it touches Scott, what, what happens uh, to Scott's body? Well, it exerts an equal opposite force in that direction. My force is going into Scott that way, yeah. so your body reacts Newton's third law towards me. Yeah. So therefore, when that happens, you've got a force going that way towards me. What other force have you got there? There's one other one. Yeah, gravity, right? So you've got a force coming towards me this way, you've got a force going down that way, which is gravity, the resultant force is something in between, like, for, well, if they were equal, 45 degrees, mm. right? Yeah. So somewhere be, yeah, around 45 or between 45 and 90, right? So what happens at the Wing Chun punch? When it's loose, our wrists can move. So when I actually hit him there, you know, it's just, you know, yeah. this, when the first one, when it, once it touches, then we get the reaction force, then this one goes up. Yeah. And if your wrist has got enough looseness in it, and it goes up 45 degrees, and the other force is 45 degrees down, mm. it's, directly opposite. it's directly opposite his force. So therefore, that force of his, the resultant, the total is that way. If I, if I go forward, it's only against his reaction forward force. Mm. If I hit him, uh, upwards, right? It's against his weight, yeah. but this one goes at the angle. It's directly against his maximum force. So, if his weight was say, you know, ninety-one, ninety-one, <laughs> say this force here is let's say the same ninety-one. Yeah. Uh, when you add it together, what would be the resultant vector? What would be the magnitude? Yeah, oh, what would be oh. ninety-one, ninety-one? What would that be? Yeah, one would be Come on. Plus that's 91. 91. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, 1.4, right? Okay. How do you think? Okay, you think? okay. <laughs> so, which means if I hit him that way and I can get that exact angle right, my fist will 
transfer 140 and you room all the kil <laughs> kilograms <laughs> there. Whereas if I hit him there like that, the most it can transfer is 90, but it won't because it'll move. You'll get knocked back, so you might only get 40 or 50, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so if I go upwards, like an uppercut, and lift him off the ground, I can get 91 into there. But this way, I can get 140, um, and I and it becomes automatic. Mm -hmm. So that's why when you oh, that, it, when it hits. And the wrist action is automatic, goes in there, and then it delivers the force in the correct angle. With a lot of practice, you'll get used to getting the correct angle, right? Mm -hmm. When we hit that table bag, yeah, a lot of times later you develop how to get that force. Because if you hit that bag, yeah. it slides across and moves away. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the force doesn't go into it. Mm -hmm. yeah, it goes in pushing the bag across the, the, the table. So after a lot of practice, you, you tend to be able to put more and more force in it and move it less and less, which means more and more of your force goes into that bag, right? I'm good at that. Yeah, so, so basically, um, the Wing Chun punch has a lot of advantages, right, on getting the power. Everyone understand that? Yes. Guess what? One of the things you don't want to happen to you when you're throwing your punch. Yeah, get hit at the same time, right? I mean, yeah, every, every time you throw a punch, your opponent's got a chance of creating an opening. Imagine I throw a punch like this, everywhere is open. Yeah. You can hit me anywhere. Yeah. But the Wing Chun punch, if, if I throw a punch there like that, yeah. and I'm hitting with the bottom two knuckles and it's coming in that direction, my elbow can point downwards. Mm. I can cover my whole body. Guess what, when I'm throwing my punch, it's like I'm guarding up all that. If I'm guarding up like this, when I throw my punch, I'm just guarding up. So it gives me the strong position. It's protecting me against that when mm -hmm. I'm hitting him. So it gives me a chance to defend while I'm actually attacking. So actually when I'm throwing a punch, I'm not leaving an opening. But if I go like that, yeah, yeah, 50, 50. yeah. but this way, I'm blocking him at the same time. Right? So basically, that's why the Wing Chun Punch is done like that. And having vertical fist, hitting with the bottom knuckles, bringing the elbow down on the centre line, it allows us to cover our whole centre line while we throw our punch. And at any time we are punching, it's like we're guarding up. Right? Mm. So I don't create any openings while I punch because it's just going through my guard. Right? And all it is, is having a guard that's extended. Some people guard very far out here, some guard very close. Yeah. When you're throwing the punch, you're just going in between the two, but keeping your hands in position.